Hello and welcome to this video which shows how to compute interaction plots and main effects plots. In this video we'll be computing these plots with jump. But before we get to jump, let's talk a minute about what these plots are. These types of plots were originally used when we didn't have powerful computing tools to do analysis of experiments for us. And so back in those early dark ages, we could create simple plots which we could then look at and use these plots to understand which factors had the largest effect on the outcome and whether or not there were interactions between factors. To create a main effects plot, we do the following. For a given factor, in this case let's say A, we take the result values associated with each low value, so minus one's a low value, so we'll take this guy, and you can see that we would take every other one, and we take the average of these guys. And again, this is the average when A is equal to minus one. For the values where A is equal to one, we also take the average. And then our effects plot is created like this. For the value minus one, we plot the average of the results where A was set to minus one. For A is equal to plus one, we plot the average of the results where A is, was equal to plus one. And then typically we'll draw a line between these two points. This represents the effects plot. If this line has a large slope, it means that factor A made a significant difference in the observed output. If this line has a slope that's close to zero, it means that factor A does not significantly affect the output. To create an interaction plot, we do something similar. Suppose we want to create an interaction plot for the two factors A and B. We would first find the output values for which both A and B are negative one. And again, we would average these values. We would then find the values for which a is 1 and b is negative 1. We could average these values. Similarly, we find values for which a is minus 1 and b is 1, and these ones we would average. And finally, the values for which a and b are both 1, and we would average them. And then we create a plot where we'll graph a on the axis and we'll create two different lines. We'll create a line for b is equal to negative one. When a is equal to negative one and b is equal to negative one, that's the case we have here, that's these green guys, we'll get a point. For a is equal to one and b is equal to negative one, that's the red guys, we'll get another point. And we'll connect these with a line. And again, these are the points that correspond to b is equal to negative one. When b is equal to one, Let's see, when a is negative one and b is one, we have these pink guys, so that will give us a point. And when a is negative one, or I'm sorry, when a is one and b is one, we'll have the yellow guys. And that will give us a point. And then we connect these two points. Or again, this is negative one and this is one. This is an interaction plot. It shows us how the factors interact with each other. If these two lines are parallel, it means the two factors don't interact with each other. I can optimize each one individually. But if these factors are not parallel, or if these two lines are not parallel, then the factors do interact, and I have to optimize them jointly. So now let's see if we can make jump do the same thing. So let's open the data file from our experiment in jump. Let's also create the experimental design. Now we'll copy and paste our experimental data into our d experimental design table. So when we do the analysis of the experiment, Jump has already created the main effects plot. And that's what this guy here is. We can also get jump to compute the interaction plot by going to factor profiling interaction plots. And there they are. And what this tells us is that 
factors b and a because the, the, the b is the column, a is the row, because these are almost parallel factors a and b don't interact much. Factors a and c don't interact much. Factors a and d, you can see that these lines are not quite parallel, so they do interact a little bit. The big interaction, however, is between factors b and d. You can see that this line and this line are not parallel at all. And since this is the row for b and the column for d, b and d interact. If we go down here to the row for d and the column for b, you can see that these lines aren't parallel either. So they show again that they interact. So again, as you can see, it's very easy to use jump to create main effects plots and interaction plots. And that concludes this video. I hope you found it useful.